Yes, I should have bent the ladders first. And uh, I have uh, used my ultrasonic cleaner here to get all that, well, not all of the black brass that was on there, the oxidation. There's still a little bit of tarnish. Uh, it's, it's not quite as brassy as it was, uh, but I would say probably 99% of the oxidation is off of there. There's just a, a little bit of residue left on there. Now, yesterday, when I was trying to pick up the, this part with the tweezers, uh, I was thinking about my poor man's wax pencil here. And usually this will work. Okay, well maybe not so good on something like this that isn't... Uh... Okay, here we go. Okay, some, something like that works. So, so where are we going here with this? Why am I mentioning this? Well, I, people keep recommending a wax pencil to me. And you may recall that uh, months ago I tried, I tried to make one. Now, I don't think I ever did a test to see when you touch your, your little photo etch part with, with your wax pencil and go to pick it up, does it leave does it leave residue? Is is there sort of a waxy film left there? And uh, I I think there there probably is. Now I do faintly recall doing a test with this blue tack to see if if I was uh, leaving leaving any any residue of blue tack on. But I don't know if I actually tested it with with the uh, uh, wax pencil that we made. Now. What I've done is I'm, I'm preparing a toothpick here. And uh, the reason I had it hanging in the helping hands is because I, I had kind of filed down or, or sanded down the, the, the sharp end so it's a little bit blunt. And then I, I dipped it in uh, a CA glue to sort of seal the pores because what I want to do is I want to try and dip it into candle wax. Now this maybe not isn't the same kind of wax. And this is sort of what we did before. Um, I'm going to just dip it into the candle wax and get a, a, a build up a little, you know, of wax on the end here. And then I'm going to, um, the plan is to take a, a piece of photo etch, clean it so it's pristine, and then touch it both with the with with our uh, our uh, blue tack and also with the wax and then I'm going to look at it closely I don't know if I'll be able to show you or not but I'm, I'll try and we'll see does it leave residue after you touch it so uh, this little section down here we don't need so I'm, I'm just going to cut this off Now I have to admit that that was harder to cut than I thought. I thought it would cut much much easier than that. Okay, so so we've got ourselves a little piece of photo etch here that we we should be able to clean up. I'll use isopropyl and uh, anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about here. Now let's put this back before I wreck something. Okay. Now I'm just going to use my Tamiya photo etch pliers here to try and flatten those ends up just a little bit. Yeah, that seemed to actually work. Okay, and the other one. I don't know why I'm not using my fingers here. Okay, probably because my fingers don't work so good anymore. All right, now this one here, flatten it out just a little. There, yeah, it worked more or less. Now, okay, now let's, which side are we gonna wanna do our testing on here? Okay, this side almost looks more shiny for some reason. 
Um, we can probably use these two little mo two little tabs here as reference points. If you will remember, when Mr. T gave us the poking device, if you were to take one end off, it becomes a pointing device. Now, one of these, I've uh, sharpened the point a little sharper than the other, and it's this one here with the uh, Tamiya masking tape on it. So, so I know that this, this point here is really sharp unless I dull it, like I'm probably going to be doing right now. Now, my thinking is, in order to make sure that we are always looking at the proper side, we'll just make a little, a little, scribe a little X here. Now, you may not be able to see that, but I can see it. Okay. So we've got a little X on there now. Um... Okay, so where are we going with this? Let's uh, let's clean this surface up right here, and and we'll we'll use this this surface right here as as the test area, and I'll I'll touch the uh, the uh, blue tack right there, and I'll touch the wax pencil right there, and then we'll we'll move in nice and close with the super macro and see if we can see any any residue. Okay, I've dipped my uh, cotton swab into isopropyl here. And, and my thinking is to just scrub this area here in case there's any, uh, you know, tarnish or anything like that on it. Actually, I'm more concerned about the, uh, the, the glue or the gum on the, uh, the, 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 uh, for, that's on the plastic. Okay, we, we will put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, I don't need to worry about the, the rest of it up here because uh, that's not where we're doing the test. I just want to make sure that I got it really good here. I, let's turn our cotton swab over and get a, a fresh side here. It's starting to come apart, but that's okay. We'll clean it, we'll clean it up. We'll blow it off before we do our test. At least, that's the plan. Okay. Okay, now we want to be careful not to touch this with our fingers, right? And uh, just in case there's somebody that's uh, wondering what is it that I use in my ultrasonic cleaner, I either use soapy water or this, I believe it's Iwata airbrush cleaner. Um, yeah, it's from Iwata. And it seems to work really well. Okay, there I've swabbed most of the excess off. Now, this, uh, this Iwata cleaner, it, uh, it, it probably leaves a residue on there. It's, it's rather soapy. So I'm, I'm just gonna slosh this around a little bit in my isopropyl. Now some of you might be thinking that I'm contaminating my isopropyl. Well, I probably am, but so minusculely you might say that it's not going to make any difference. Okay, now let's uh, let's try not to touch this surface. I know I keep saying that, but I, I have to keep reminding myself. That should evaporate. This is the 99%. Uh, it probably will leave very little residue. Now, when the light hits this just right, or maybe I should say just wrong, I'm seeing what appears to be almost like a watermark across the surface there. 
Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Q-tip, maybe I'll get a fresh one, and I'm going to use the isopropyl and just rub it again. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's necessary. Maybe it's just my imagination here. Anyway, we got to make up our wax pencil, right? As you can imagine, these are just for emergency lighting. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually used them for that, and I've had this little tin for 30 to 40 years. Now let's not burn the house down. Okay, so the idea is we're just going to let the wax pool in there. <clears throat> and then we're going <laughs> to... I can't pick stuff up. Okay. Alright, let's not set our toothpick on fire here now. I'll let that cool. If I go like this in the air, it'll solidify a little faster. Now dip again. And we'll let it cool. I know this probably looks kind of funny, but... Okay, I would think that's got it. Now I'll just continue to let that hang down so that it sort of forms at a bit of a point. I, I can imagine that it's probably solidified as much as it's going to get. Okay, what I've got here is one of Tennessee Jim's mini Q-tips. It might uh, have the less uh, tendency to fray. I want that to to dry off so that there's not what appears to be a like a watermark. I can actually see it evaporating there from the way the light's hitting it. I, maybe you can't see it. The light's different for you. Okay, I think we're about as good as we can get here. Now, if you remember, we're going to use these little tabs here as reference points. This one and this one. And I'll use my blue tack picker up and I'm going to try and, and touch it right in the center of this uh, whatever you call it. Okay, so here we go. Okay, well it kind of picked it up. Try it again. Maybe I didn't press down hard enough. There. Okay, let's get that off of there now. Now for the waxed, homemade waxed pencil. This may not work. It could be that this piece of brass is too heavy. Yeah, it, it's it's too heavy. However, I, I, I can I can see a, mar a mark with just just by looking at it. I'm not I'm not even using the super marker. I'm gonna try it one more time here. No, it it uh, it just won't pick it up. Um, anyway, let's let's put the super macro on, and we'll we we'll, we should be able to get both of the these in at the same time. Well, I've got the ordinary macro on. Just want to see will this homemade wax pencil work on something lighter, and it should. No, not really. Oh, there we go. I don't know if it's stuck to it or we just sort of wedged in between the rungs. Yeah, it kind of wants to stick, but not really. No. I guess uh, the real wax pencils are the way to go.
Well, I can see residue here, and I don't even need to use my microscope. So if you can see a mark, well, it's got to be residue, right? So it is leaving something on the surface of the photo etch. Now that something would sort of impede the ability of the paint to, uh, to stick to the photo etch. Uh, yeah, no, that's just my opinion. <laughs> and as I've said so many times before, I could be wrong. Now you're probably going to think that I deliberately positioned this like this to prove my point, you might say. But this, this has to, I want to have this bend towards the crease or, or the, the detente or indentation or whatever you want to call it. Um, like right here and here and here and the same on this side. When I turn this over, you will notice that there's going to be a little bit of a a natural way that it's going to want to bend. In other words, the photo etch is a little bit thinner right here where I'm touching and here. Uh, I think most of you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to uh, put the macro lens on and then we'll be able to see this a little better. Okay, let's see if I can do this properly on camera. Now, you're going to want to watch where the stair tread attaches to the stringer, you'll notice it's going to look just a little bit different. Now, let's see if I can turn this over. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Now you notice right in here there's a little dent. Okay. Let's uh, open our jaw up just a little bit. We'll try and bring it in so that that <clears throat> Excuse me, that dent is going to be right along the... Hey, you know what? I just realized I've, I've got this thing the wrong way around. Well, okay. All right, here we go. Sorry, Andy. I know better than that. to do it is to put a flat blade right in right in the where the where the dents are and then just move it right up against the edge you can do it that way or or you can eyeball it too I'm looking straight down on it now and I can see it's pretty much the way we want it let's lower this down now I'll reposition the lens here so that we're you're looking at it more from the side Try and get that underneath without it bending the railing. Those railings bend so easily. Now this may not go all the way up because the railing is going to bump into the uh, shoulder of the photo edge bender, but that's okay. We can tweak it later. Yeah, it's as far as I can go. Okay, now we have to bend those stair treads at a bit of an angle. And the angle we're going to want them will be probably uh, well what it what it should be. So let's see if I can turn this thing around here so that you can so that you can see here. Okay, you, you notice the, the angle that that this this part is. Okay, so we would want the stair treads theoretically should be more or less at right angles to that uh, because the 
the ladder goes a little bit more straight up than than horizontal if you know what I mean okay I'm gonna have to uh, reposition everything I think I'm gonna just do this on the green cloth because uh, uh, while it just works better you'll see why when I'm doing it now I used to think that it would make a difference if you started at the top or the bottom uh, tread and and then bent from there but it doesn't really seem to make any difference so we're going to just go and it doesn't have to be at a perfect angle okay now it's going to be hard to do this and not get it move it out of your field of view so we put the next one in here and be careful not to catch the the tread above It doesn't seem to want to be bending. Here it goes. Here are the next one. So let me check the monitor if I still got it. More or less. Okay. Okay. Now the next one. Okay, let me check the monitor. And the last one. Okay, now we're going to want to squeeze these in, remember, just a little bit. We'll leave them out just a, a bit so that if they're going through an opening in the, in the deck, they kind of will wedge, the, wedge themselves in. Okay, I, I think you've probably seen that enough here, enough poking. Doesn't want to turn over, how come? Keeps going back. There we go. Well, it had been my plan to do the uh, black brass thing again this afternoon, but I can see in order to, to, you know, to get everything done, you might say comfortably, and be able to enjoy it and have fun, uh, I would be rushing it. And, uh, I think uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, just go ahead and bend the other two off, off camera, get them done, and tomorrow we'll either paint or re-brass black. I'm kind of leaning towards trying this one more time and see how it goes after these are bent. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.